Michael Singer, the author of The Untethered Soul, um, wrote this. He said, you will get to a point in your growth where you understand that if you protect yourself, you will never be free. And ultimately, if you protect yourself perfectly, you will never grow. When a good day means you made it through without getting hurt, the longer you live like this, the more closed off you will become. So I thought that was a really interesting perspective on trust. And you could give so many talks on the different aspects of trust. It's such a many faceted word, just like love is. But I'll share with you my personal perspective today. So let me begin at the beginning. You could say, I grew up with trust issues and trust and its counterpart, respect, were not really well modeled in my family. And as a result, I ended up having you know different degrees of trust for various family members, some uh, I trust implicitly, and and some I trust, um, you know, it's a work in progress. Let's say so. There's that spectrum, and like many of us who grew up in dysfunctional families, or didn't we all? Um, I wasn't taught to value the trust in my own tuition and my own decisions. So as a young adult emerging into the world, I noticed I didn't have a strong foundation for trusting myself. I looked too much to the outside for verification that I was okay. Now we all do this to some degree, um, but we have to look at when we're trusting the outside world more than we're trusting ourselves. And as I emerged into my young adult self, I, I didn't trust what I was doing was okay. I didn't trust the direction of my life was okay. I didn't trust that everything was going to be okay. I, I didn't trust life itself. And this is a common problem. I'm not the only one. And when you look at trust in a larger way, gee, you look at the world and the society where trust is eroding. Some of you may be aware that we've hit our in terms of mass shootings, we crossed over the 200 marker just earlier today, 200 mass shootings. That erodes a certain amount of societal trust. We feel deeply divided along racial lines, along political lines, along socioeconomic lines that you know we all feel this dissolving of the middle class. Uh, we don't feel safe. There is... Uh, also a constant undertone of feeling on edge. And I think that's perpetuated a lot by the media and social media. And it creates what someone told me a long time ago was free floating anxiety. It's this anxiety that floats out here and it just attaches itself onto whatever is convenient to attach itself to, but it's this cloud of anxiety. And I think that trust is the antidote to anxiety. And I believe that to develop, to develop a really good foundation of trust in life will make us happy. The more we have a foundation of trust, the more happy we are. Trust equals happy. And it comes into play in, in nearly every aspect of our lives. With trust, we're not alone. And I'll explain that more. Trust helps us make, uh, helps, helps us feel safe. Trust is like an anchor on a boat. Trust is like a sail on a boat. Trust dissolves anxiety and, and trust dispels self-doubt. And trust in many situations, wherever you see the word faith, you can substitute trust because faith is spiritual trust. So faith and trust are partners with each other. Recently, I, I realized that the only book on my bookshelves that was about trust was this book called Trusting Yourself. And the wisest thing that I could find in it right away was on the outside edge, someone wrote to me, the person who gave it to me said, trusting in yourself is the first step towards trusting the world around you. And I love that. But when we have deficits in trust, trust for ourselves, where do we turn? Ultimately, I learned that to trust myself and trust in life, the spiritual path was the most effective way to bring healing. And, and one of these was long before I 
I discovered new thought traditions like this one. It was um, in AA. And that's when I learned about trust as surrender. And some of you, uh, many of you may be familiar with the 12 steps. I'm not going to read them all here, but in 12 step programs, they, they all use, uh, they use the word God in their 12 steps, but they talk a lot about higher power because 12 steps are not, uh, 12 step groups are not religious, they're spiritual. They are so spiritual because they rely on a belief in a higher power of your understanding, a God of your understanding, whatever you think that is. So people that come into 12 step groups that are atheists, they can say, okay, the 12 steps are my higher power. Whatever you choose to be that higher power, you have to trust in that something. And I was reading some of the steps and I, I called these out because these reminded me of this talk topic today. Step number three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him or her or it. That's surrender. That's total trust. Step five is we admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. That requires trust. Step six and seven, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, and we humbly asked the God of our understanding to remove these shortcomings. That's surrender. And a side note, this is really interesting. I didn't realize this until today. Step eight and nine. Step eight, through prayer and meditation, we improve our conscious contact with God as we understand him. This is, this is the fourth principle of unity. Through prayer and meditation, we, we deepen our, contact, our, our, our conscious connection with source. And then step nine, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and practice the principles in all of our affairs. This is unity's fifth principle. It's, it's, it's an amazing coincidence, but uh, I, I believe that all of these, they, they say that Ernest Holmes uh, uh, knew Bill Wilson, and I think that all these people were taking wisdom from new thought around the same time. So more thoughts on trust as surrender. We can't surrender into nothingness. You can't fall into a net unless you believe in the net. So you surrender into the knowledge that God is always there and that God is all there is. You know, I talk about principles earlier. I read a couple of days ago, someone said, well, there wouldn't be a principle two, three, four, or five. There would only be one principle if people really believed in the one principle that God is all there is or source is all there is. We wouldn't need all the other principles because the first one says it all. Uh, further experiences of trust early on in my life and surrender, uh, I was thinking about my dad teaching me how to ride a bike. And I was so scared, but my dad knew that I could do it and that I would do it. But I didn't know that. I had to viscerally, I had to get past that, that understanding that I can't do this. And my dad knew the laws of the universe were that the bike would balance once I got up to a certain speed, but I didn't. And so when we got up to a certain speed, I said, dad, you got, you got me? And I realized at that moment, he had let go already. He said, you're doing it all on your own. And he was running beside me. And that's when I realized, oh, that, that I developed a trust there. And I realized that that isn't God like that. Isn't God like that? He's been running beside us all the way. Um, we've got it. And God's got it. And, and it's a law of the universe. It, it's just so beautiful when you think of it that way. Another experience of trust came to me uh, just Friday. Uh, it was a tense week at work, and I was waiting for some situations to resolve themselves. I was, I was wondering why I wasn't hearing from my boss about something and why this something else wasn't happening. And Friday, Friday around 5 p.m., I was exhausted, and I decided to just kind of meditate and pray a little bit and explore this idea of trust, which was... I knew that that was going to be my talk topic. So I decided to melt into that. And I actually fell asleep for about 10 minutes. And when I woke up, I woke up to three major messages in my messaging platform that 
all three things had been resolved by three different parties, three different situations. All of them had resolved on Friday evening. <laughs> and I suppose that was my, my way of proving that if I surrender, if I give up control and let God of my understanding have the steering wheel for a moment, if I think about falling into the arms of God, as the book title says, I, I won't fall. I won't fall. I won't get hurt. Um, it may be a little scary, but but the God of my understanding will catch me. And maybe the God of my understanding is my higher self, is my own divinity. So this is where I turn to total trust. And I remember the story of a mentor a long time ago telling me, um, David, are, are you all in for God? Because I, I, I was coming to her with a problem. And she said, are you all in for God? because God is all in for you. And it was just like a spiritual slap in the face. To me, this is total trust, just remembering that God is all in for you. So why aren't you all in 100% for God? And, and I begin to think about the, the spiritual concepts. Uh, Juliet mentioned Michael Beckwith earlier. I, I learned from him the concept of mother, father, God. And isn't that a totally wonderful concept? Because it's it's unconditional love. It's a game changer when you think of uh, you've got the image that you were raised with, which is perhaps an angry judging God that would send you to hell. Many of us were grew up with that understanding. And then you have this juxtaposed unconditional loving God, uh, mother, father God, that you can have total trust in and you can use to dissolve the tape recordings of self self doubt because the thing that comes along with that is mother father god takes your parents off the hook your parents are your biological parents but it takes them off the hook of being your spiritual parents god is your spiritual parent your highest self your highest uh, christ consciousness self is your is your spiritual parent and so the God of my understanding, I have to understand is greater than all things, is greater than all things. And in, in God, all things are possible, as it says in the Bible, despite any conditions, despite anything. And whenever I need unconditional love and I'm having moments of doubt, I have to realize that this higher power is greater than any problem or any condition. And we have to we have to see what we believe. You've heard this before. We have to see what we believe instead of believing what we see and letting that tell us how to think. Uh, and, and, and understand, I, I love the saying that the universe is conspiring for our greatest good. It is all the time. So this foundation helped me trust myself. So the next time you pray, think about praying to trust, just kind of melting into and falling into the arms of God when you pray, thinking about surrendering into this, into this quantum field, this safety net that is all things, and remembering that prayer is bringing you closer to this safety net of God. It's not bringing God or asking God to do anything. It's knowing that God is already doing all these things, and God knows exactly what your intentions are without you having to put a thesis together, without you having to crystallize, without you having to use the law of attraction, God knows exactly what your intentions are. God is all in for you. I'll take this theme of, of total trust a little further. Uh, uh, Coot Blackson, never heard of him. He wrote a book called You Are the One. And in it, he wrote, are you willing to trust bigger than yourself? Are you willing to trust bigger than yourself? Because this is the Gandhi zone. This is the Jesus zone. Let go of the control that you think you have and watch miracles unfold. It's a level of consciousness that miracle makers of the world are living. And, and that's just a beautiful uh, other viewpoint window into this total trust. So I'll say a few final words uh, on trust. Uh, I read somewhere that the power of trust is like building up little habits. It's not something you're going to acquire. It's like many things, little trust habits. 
just a few hours ago, I rewrote practically this entire talk and I was getting nervous and I was thinking, oh gosh, my mentor is going to be here. And she's laughing probably because she's done that before rewriting the whole talk. In fact, I was texting her, oh my gosh, I'm rewriting my talk right now. And then I remembered the thing that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. So why doubt that? And I realized that everything is always working out for me is a trust building affirmation. All affirmations don't have to begin with I am. Affirmations can be truth statements, and that certainly is one. So maybe another affirmation would be, I trust that the universe is conspiring for my greatest good and for the greatest good of everyone right now. You know, these trust affirmations can be so powerful. So what happens then? when you're having a bad day, when you're having a bad month, when you're having a, a situation that some might call the dark night of the soul. Uh, I, I then take some advice from Michael Beckwith uh, again, and he wrote in Spiritual Liberation, he wrote about the dark night of the soul. And he wrote this, he said, I surrender to the alchemy of the dark night of the soul. I give my consent to its transforming touch, and I am patient in the midst of my discomfort. I am open, receptive, and I resist not. Even now, I sense the soul activity taking place within me, and I am grateful for it. This alchemy within me, and I'm grateful for it. So, ah, he actually used the word alchemy. I surrender, he says, to the alchemy of the dark night of the soul. So when something spiritual happens, a spiritual realization happens or a spiritual lesson is happening, it can change you physically. And sometimes it takes the physical part of your world time to catch up. And that's the alchemy of the dark night of the soul. Uh, you think of other dark nights of the soul. Jesus wandered in the desert for uh, symbolic 40 days and 40 nights, which means a very, very long time to complete a spiritual journey before he could be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and begin his ministry. Uh, the Buddha wandered for seemingly lost for years, exploring this method and that before he sat underneath the Bodhi tree and found nirvana and found enlightenment. So this, this period of being lost is sometimes a prerequisite towards greater enlightenment. And you can trust in the process. There's a, a, a song, I'll, I'm going to conclude. There's a song that Margo's going to sing at the end of service. And we've all sung it many times before, but I want us to draw our attention to the fact that it's a spiritual mantra. It's a spiritual affirmation. Uh, and the words I release and I let go, I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife with my faith or my trust. I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God, the God of my understanding, whatever that is. So let's go inward for a moment of prayer. I'm so grateful for this message. I'm grateful for this community, this lesson activated through me today. And so with this lesson, I say, are you all in for God? Because God is all in for you. And when in doubt, know that you can just rest and fall into the arms of a loving God that only sees the highest you, the highest wise sage version of you. So trust in God and let this trust appear in its many forms. Trust can be an anchor. Trust can be a sail. Trust can be a parachute, trust can be a net. Trust can be the loving arms of God. Trust can be a friend. Trust can be your wisest, truest self. Trust can be your proverbial dad energy pushing you along on the bicycle, knowing that you've had it. You've got it. The laws of the universe are letting you fly. 
That's my prayer for you. And so it is. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm All right, so this is that divine time where we just get to be still together and listen to what is eternal and what is real with a capital R within us. So for just a few moments, we'll allow our eyes to close. And the purpose of closing the eyes is to turn your attention inward to that place within us that is untouched by outside circumstances, by history, by any belief system, or as Reverend Michael puts it, BS that we may have. And so we get to spend this time simply listening, simply opening to the presence, to God, to that eternal life within us and all around us. And so if you need a guide, a guide post during your meditation, Today you can use a quality of the spirit like love or joy, peace, harmony, creativity. And if you find yourself in the future or in the past or involved in a story or thought, that in that moment you say that quality, that word out loud within yourself, to yourself, and allow the vibration of that word to bring you back, bring your attention back to the present moment. And know that during this time, we're not fighting with ourselves to clear our mind. Know that there will be thoughts, there will be moving to the future or the past, there will be getting involved in that. And so when we recognize that, in that moment, we bring ourselves back to that word, that quality of the spirit and allow that vibration to bring us back to that listening state. And so for a few moments, we'll sit together in the stillness and the silence as one heart and one life, just simply listening and becoming available. And as you begin to settle into the stillness, whatever is up for you today, whatever is present within you or around you, allow yourself to have full acceptance of that. Just give thanks for the opportunity to be with it and to listen, to be open and available.
Noticing where is your attention. And so as we begin to close out the meditation part of the service, take this moment to just feel what a few moments of silence feel like and see if you can feel your own heart connected to all the other members of the community and feel that opening to grace, to love. And just take a moment to be in thanksgiving and gratitude for being together and for being able to have this time of listening. receiving. So to close out meditation, we'll take a full breath in together. And easefully exhale out. And as you're ready, you can begin to allow your eyes to open bringing your attention back into the space.